I'm Zila. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we're the Yahoo and the Tori YouTube channel. And we are so glad you could join us today. Again, we know that your time is very, very important, that you could be doing other things, especially early in the mornings, or wherever, whatever time you are, you could always be doing something else, but you've chosen to sit with Yah's Word, you've chosen to learn what is in it, you've learned to do what it says and what Yahoo wants you to do, and you should be proud of yourself for that. You should, that's the that's further step in the kingdom, that is something you should be very proud of. Yeah, Revelations fourteen twelve says, the two qualifications of a saint is the faith in Messiah Yahushua and keeping the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator. So it's very important. It is a second day, and it feels like it should be like a third day or fourth day for some yeah. reason. Yeah, it does. Um, for those of you who are who have stopped drinking caffeine, and I am super, super proud of you. I'm sure Yah is pretty super proud of you. I am on day, what is this, seven, eight, nine. I am on day nine of this. And yesterday, I had some headache tinges, and... The worst day of all was day two, and um, since then it's just been like little tremors on and off stuff. And you know, I was obviously a glutton at nine cups of coffee a day. So everybody who is doing anything lower than that, hopefully this is a smooth sailing um, trip for you guys. And we have a new person on the bandwagon, and Nicole gave up coffee yesterday, and she's been drinking since she was 15 years old. And she's not too old, but I can't even say how old she is because she'd be very angry at me. Oh, can I say how old you are? You can tell how old I am. How old are you? <laughs> she's two years younger than me. I'm 45. 43. 43. So she's 43. She's been drinking caffeine, caffeine since she was 15, and so she gave this up um, because, uh, you know, this is not, you know, we're drinking insecticide and things of that nature, and so we shouldn't be doing that. We should be keeping our temples as clean as possible and... There is, I mean, the more studying I'm doing on this, there is a physio physiological brain change, right? It, it really rewires your brain and rewires your body. So um, I am not done with detoxing yet. I'm still a little hurt. I'm still getting owned, but it's worth it, and I believe it will be worth it. And I can't, I just, when, when I'm flowing with all the blood in my brain like it should, who knows what, what kind of thinking I could do. I mean, we, could, we should be able to, like, take E equals MC squared and to, to just have that down in seconds, right? We should be able to get a chalkboard full of just all sorts of formulas and just be super smart or not. But hopefully it can't hurt. So. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Anything. Don't do anything that alters your heart, mind, and soul ever. It is not worth it. Our creator has given us every kind of um, dopamine, every kind of uh, thing that we need. You know, we have the, the fight or flight um, capabilities, which, is, you know, somebody you're walking in the darkness and somebody jumps out and scares you. You have two options, right? You either, you know, run or lay hands on that person, um, scream for sure. But you, our body chemistry is amazing. Our creator is amazing. Every single thing he creates and the way when I'm reading through this caffeine stuff, the bo our body takes this stuff and it, it the chemistry of Yaw's creation is simply amazing. And we are altering it and we are putting ourselves in a, in a different state. And one other thing I want to touch real quick and then I'll get off the caffeine hit is that um, the research I was reading yesterday and I, I put a report here on, on the Yahoo and the Tor channel is that um, it... Uh, you never sleep, right? It, it, they did studies on people to drink one single cup of coffee a day. And they, they, they went and tested them throughout the day, throughout the night, throughout the next day. And the, this stuff called this uh, prax, praxithine, it, which caffeine is converted into, never, ever leaves your body. So if you are drinking caffeine, you may never, ever get a good night of sleep. And uh, I know Fearmonger out there, and he says, I can't, I can't stop caffeine because I, I get insomnia. Um, <laughs> if you're hearing this, Barkley, you know I'm giving you crap because I know you could stop this if uh, you wanted to. But, yeah, maybe cold turkey isn't the best way to go. Um, if you are able to lower yourself off little bits at a time and can successfully do that, that might be the easiest way off. But I'm telling you, you can go cold turkey. It's, it's, it hurts. All right, gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. How's your day? It's, it's early in the morning. We're actually doing this on the same day, which is kind of cool because we're, we feel like we're like with you guys. Um, so I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. All of our family out there, our digital family, we thank you guys very, very much for spending this time. Um, and thank you for joining us as a family and for hanging out with us and for commenting and for just being a part of our family. And you guys definitely are. So we have 
Um, where are we at right now, Cade, with the scriptures here? Okay, so we've been through Genesis. We went through, we got to Moses, where he brought the Yashalites out of Egypt to where they were on the mount. They sinned, they built the giant calf. And then he's basically been giving instructions on how to build the temples, and now the people are building the temples, the Ark of the Covenant, and the altars. They are all putting that together. They are laying on all their boards, laying on all the poles, and they're just putting it together like masterful uh, builders. Yeah, and I'm detoxing from um, commandments. We haven't had a commandment now for like five chapters, so I, I we, ha we have nothing. So hopefully we'll have something soon and uh, can add to it because we're stuck at round 50, and still one of those we don't we don't one or two of those we don't know if it should make the 50 list. All right, let's begin, everyone. Let's do it. Exodus 38, and he made the altar of the ascending smoke offering of Chittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits was the breadth thereof. It was four square and three cubits the height thereof. Are we sure we're on the right chapter? Mm -hmm. Th 38, right? Yeah. All right. It seems I remember these cubits before, but that's they run, right. They run the same cubits for long ways. <laughs> we heard the design, and it wasn't the actual building of it. Then we heard the building of it, and... Um, we'll hear more building. More building. And he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. Now, what are we building here? I believe the altar. The altar. The altar, and it has the four horns on it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots and the shovels and the basins and the flesh hooks and the fire pans, all the vessels thereof made he of brass. Did you guys say flesh hooks? Forks. 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 I'm like, wow. Like large forks. Like it's flesh hooks. That can be. It sounds wild. Yes. NIV says meat forks. Meat forks. Okay. All like right. Big fork. I think it's like the big uh, one you like poke into the big. I don't like, think it's an eating fork. Yeah, yeah. it's for like separating the meat, I think. Yeah, this is for dealing with the cows with without using your hands. Okay, and he made for the altar a brazen grate of network under the compass thereof beneath unto the midst of it. Okay, did you say network? It does say yeah, a network. Yeah, network, yeah. Okay, um, so a network it is. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of chittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it withal. He made the altar hollow with boards. Okay, so it's a hollow. It's a hollow box. It's a box with a mesh on top, or some sort of grill on top. But it's also with boards, and it's also going to be having enormous heat, right, which is why you'd have to overlay in gold, probably. And he made the laver of brass, and the foot of it of brass, and the looking glasses of the woman women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. Now that sounds funky. What? Why does that sound funny? Okay, it's bronze. What does that say in the in the and he made the and he made the basin of bronze and the stand of bronze and the bronze mirrors of the serving women who did service at the tent of appointment. Okay, so the women has, made okay. the mirrors. Mirrors. Okay, interesting. They were able to make mirrors back then. Very high end folks. And he made the court on the south side southward. The hangings of the court were of fine twined linen, a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their brazen sockets twenty, and the, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. All right, so what do we got? Pillars, we got brazen sockets. Did you say brazens? Bronze. Bronze, okay, bronze. Okay, and for the north side, the hangings were 100 cubits. Their pillars were 20, and their sockets of brass 20, the hooks of the pillars, and their fillets of silver. And for the west side were hangings of, of 50 cubits, their pillars 10, their sockets 10, the hooks of the pillars, and the fillets of silver. Does anyone have any idea what they're saying there? Okay, mine uh, says uh, hooks uh, and sockets. What do we do? What do we bands. describe? The fillets are some kind of bands of silver, some kind of silver bands. So we are still on the um, the uh, the uh, the burning sacrifice thing, right? Altar. The altar, the burning altar. Right. This is where they're gonna be doing sacrifices. Right. Right. My, I, I yeah. lost it. Uh -huh. Has my coffee lack of coffee stopped me from anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> and for the east side, eastward, fifty cubits. The hangings of the one side of the gate were 15 cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate, on this hand and that hand were hangings of 15 cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. What if you didn't know which way his hands were facing? How would you know? He goes, this hand and that hand. I don't know. There's that's, not obvious, a, that's not a real good description. <laughs> obviously, Yah has given Moshe some more, some of the design guides here. All the hangings of the court roundabout were of fine twined linen. And the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlaying of their chapiters of silver. What did you guys say, chapiters? Overlaying of the 
columns. Columns of silver, okay? And the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. I think that's filleted, is that word? Filleted? Filleted. It's and just the, overlaid. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen, and 20 cubits was the length, and the height in the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the court. And their pillars were four, and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver, and their overlaying of their chapiters, and their fillets of silver. Okay, stick with us, guys. This is kind of dry reading, especially where we don't describe it real well. It's your teachers that are letting you down. Actually, we're not teachers. We're just uh, parroters. We parrot this stuff. And all the pins of the tabernacle and of the court round about were of brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of testimony, as it was counted according to the commandment of Moshe for the service of the Levium by the hand of Ithumar, son of Aaron, the priest. And Betzalel, the son of Uri, the son of Kori, of the tribe of Yahuda, made all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And with him was Eholeav, son of Akiah Kamak, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a cunning workman, and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen. All the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work for the holy, of the holy place, even the gold of the offering was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. All right, so all the gold that was occupied for the work Okay, so where are we just measuring up gold now? I think so. Yeah, this is about the materials used, I think. All right. Okay. And the silver of them that were numbered of the assembly was a hundred talents, and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. So there's a whole pile of whatever. So this is a ton of silver. Thousand seven hundred seven hundred and three score. Okay. A baraka for every man. That is, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for everyone that went to be numbered from 20 years old and upward for 600,000 and 3,000 and 550 men. Okay. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast, the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, a hundred sockets of the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. This is getting expensive. And of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chapiters and filled them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the doors of the tabernacle of the assembly and the brazen altar and the brazen grave for it and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about and the sockets of the court gate and all the pins of the tabernacle and all the pins of the court round about okay well um this is uh here's some footnotes up here this might be interesting um so 38 one we're talking like four and a half feet so we're talking about all this the weight of the gold was little over a ton jinkies how in the world would they ever hold that thing they would take piles of them to move this thing around yeah that's why it breaks down a piece of things one metric ton wow uh, that is about three and three quarter tons, or about three point four metric tons. Oh, wow! No wonder it took four dudes to move the yard. Poor, the poor wow. Levites, man. The poor Levites. Well, they, hey, they got uh, they they had to work, but they didn't have to work, right? Their work was this, doing this, moving have, this they, thing they, around. They the warriors. Yeah, they didn't have to go in. It wasn't Yahuda by any means. Okay, well, I guess that ends today's little lesson or the teaching or the parroting that we are doing. And um, I don't have anything major. Does anyone have anything major? Eli, how you doing, buddy? Good. Are you sleeping over there on me? A little tired. A little tired. Okay, Come, coming out of your room. He, he's, a, he's a sleepy head in the morning, really sleepy. It's like I got to get him up two hours early to get him functioning. But that's all right. All right, Jaden, you have anything? I got nothing. It's building we're almost out of exodus so we should be getting more commands meaning of leviticus yeah well leviticus is going to be all of the commands of the tabernacle so that you know i'm not finding a tremendous amount of commands i mean we're only we're almost through the second book and we only have less than 50 so this is definitely not 613 that we're i don't know maybe, maybe leviticus, but i mean if, if you add the priest laws and everything else like that maybe Right, might, if you might had the closer, priest laws. but, I don't think but that, how would that? How would we ever do the priest laws? I mean, that none of that could apply to us today, and we don't but need to. We don't have it. Right. I mean, why doesn't the priest laws apply to us, Jade? Because we're not Levites. We're not priests. We're not ordained to do this. Why don't the Le Why don't the the priest jobs pertain to us today? 
Um, because we have Yehoshua. He, yeah. he he died for our sins. He became the sacrificed lamb. Yes, he did. And um, every, everybody everybody gives me the look when I when I throw you guys under the bus like this. But I'm looking for specific answers on this. And so I know these guys know this. But yeah, Yehoshua. And so when the temple, I mean, they're building a temple. And when Yehoshua dies, the temple veil rips from the bottom up. And it signifies something. What does it signify, Cade? That there is no longer a need for people to repent of sins. There's no longer need of a mediator. Yahusha is the mediator. Right. Absolutely. And so, and that that was the big thing. And, and you know, the the all these Pharisees and Sadducees and all these guys. You know, for those who do not know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were a sect of Judaism that did not keep the Torah. They kept the Talmud. They kept 25 other books. And so when Messiah Yahushua came and he duked it out with all of them, he was fighting up with two different gangs. Like, and they were literally gangs. I mean, you can see what kind of gang they are. I mean, they, they, they beat him up and put him on a cross. That's how much of a gang this is. And, um, you know, they, there's no mercy with these people. And they follow completely wacky sets of laws that, you know, just stuff that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. One of them is, is that they look at people who are not in the Judean religion as goyim. They call you a goyim and you're less than a dog. Um, you can be spit on, you can be stolen from, you can, they can kill you and they can rape you. I mean, that's that literally in their Talmud. And so we have to, um, we have to keep only what law, Yah's laws, statutes, and commands are. And this is why it is important that we go over them. It is important why we write them on our heart, mind, and soul. Um, all right. Give me the first... See who has it. Give me the first, without looking. Give me the first. Let's see if anybody has it today. I'm just throwing you guys completely. First five laws. All right, yeah, you guys. Okay. Get, Who's doing the first five? And his, okay, I'm, gonna go for, I'm gonna try this. You're gonna do this. Okay. Multiply. Nope. You're out of the uh, gate. Right. You're, 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 you're out. You're out. Does that mean like you can't look? I didn't uh, look. Be fruitful. Multiply. Have dominion over the earth. Uh, oh, it's a you're out. Nope. That's not it. Caden, okay. your last hope. Can you get the laws of Yah? Be fruitful. Ching. Multiply. Ding ding. Replenish the earth. Ding ding. Subdue the earth. Ding ding. Have dominion over the animals. Ding ding. All right, Kate got a hundred percent. I was gonna cross call over. <laughs> I was just gonna say the first five. I didn't know that'd be in order. All right, anybody want to try the next five? Oh man. So Kate, um, Kate got it right, and these are important, right? We're supposed to write these on our heart, mind, and soul. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over all things. Eli, stop cheating. Get out of, get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, who wants to try it, Jade? Oh man, um, all moving, all clean animals are good for you. Uh, eh. all right, no. Kate. See if you get, see if you get, you got a hundred percent. Can you? The yeah. herb of bearing seed is fruit. Is food for you? Ding ding. Did you ah. cheat? You no. cheated, didn't you? Okay, no, I knew it was go food. I'm, I'm hiding right the tablet so they can't all see right. it. Master sin. I know. Ding. All right, Eli. Uh, let's see. So six is every herb bearing tree is for food for got you. Got it. Yep. Uh, let's see. The only reason that you guys are even here. Oh man, when we should build a family. Yes. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is like the kung fu of. Whoa. Whoa. Master, master, master sin. sin, right? Like yes. Okay. What else? You got two more. Uh, are we on the are we on the food yet? Yes, all clean food. Yeah, every clean moving thing that lives <laughs> shall be food for you. All right. And what's what's number ten? It was very important. Very important. In fact, it's like the beverage drink of the Luciferians. Don't, Don't drink the blood. blood. Don't drink the blood, right. <laughs> beverage drink. <laughs> it, it is literally the beverage drink of the Luciferians. They love it. Uh, and we're not supposed to do it because life is in the blood. All right, gentlemen, thank you guys very much. Our digital family out there, guys, thank you very, very, very much. We love you all. Um, shout out to, uh, Sh I think it's it's Hannibal Gray. I think her. Na I think your name is Shan Shania. Shaina, I think we got that right. Shout out to the Grand um, Ancient Remnant Path. Um, who else? Who else do we get Sylvia comments from? Ewart. Sylvia Ewers. We don't know where she's at. We haven't seen her for a long time, so hopefully Sylvia's okay. Carla. Carla. Much love out there, Carla. Sister, we love you. Clarissa. Uh, I think. Clarissa. Yeah, Clarissa Cotton. Much love. Shayla. Fearmonger. Much love out there. Shayla. Shayla. We don't know where Shayla's at either. She's disappeared again, so hope she's okay. All right, so much love to everybody out there. Thank you guys very, very, very much. Have a All wonderful right. day. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.